If you think about sustainability, there's two ways to think about it. You can do it for you, yourself individually or for your organization. And let's start with engagement, you know. Some people think, yeah, there's all kind of problems in the world, but technology will save us. And it doesn't matter whether it's renewable energy or, or any other space, but particularly Japanese engineers tend to believe that technology will save the world. And the nuance, they don't express it that way, but the nuance is Japanese technology will, <laughs> will save the world. And I'm the biggest fan in the world of the Toyota Prius. I saw a few in the parking lot. Who, who's driving the Toyota Priuses out here? You're complete, complete heroes. <laughs> Amazing piece of technology. But the Toyota Prius is always an interesting example because I, I have been driving Toyota Priuses now for almost 10 years. I can get are you on the on the kil kilometer system or the mile mileage? So I can get 24 kilometers out of a liter of fuel in a Toyota Prius, which none of you in your big fat Mercedeses can do. <laughs> Not even a third of it. I can do that in my Prius. But if I have a fight with my wife, or I'm stressed out, or I'm not paying attention, or I pretend to be in a hurry, I can also get 10 kilometers out of the same liter of fuel out of the same vehicle. And that's a pretty good example of saying the technology can bring us a long way, but if the mindset that uses the technology is not also part of it, then it's not going to get us there. And those are the people who will say, well, technology will help, but unless we change the mindset and therefore the behavior of all people on this planet, we're never going to make it. You can do the same thing with urgency. Um, I was in Johannesburg 10 years ago when, I, I don't think it was called Rio plus 10, but the Earth Summit was held here. I think it was actually held here just around the corner. Um, in those days, there were, I think, 200 something business leaders in the overall meeting. Uh, 10 years before that in Rio, there were 13 business leaders. Six months or seven months ago in Rio plus 20, there were 1,300 business leaders. Um, there's a room full of people here. Most of you are from business. Um, you guys have uh, mandatory non-financial reporting in this country, one of the first countries in the world, amazingly enough. Well done, Murphy King. Um, that, so sustainability, 20 years ago, I always say most CEOs couldn't even spell the word, word sustainability. 10 years ago, CSR was a new concept and you had to be a little bit adventurous to engage into it. Today, if you don't have a serious CSR program, or if you do not publish a sustainability report, or if you don't have a sustainability officer working for you, you're not really a serious company anymore. So from that point of view, the journey of sustainability in the business landscape has made lots of progress. And you can be very happy with the progress. You can also, also have to view, well, it might be true. There's rooms and rooms and rooms full. You know, I can do no, I should not have taken the job if I want to complain about it. I can do three speeches like this every day of the week in every continent of the world because there are so many sustainability conferences going on. But if I'm honest, not this one, of course, but all the other ones. <laughs> no, 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 I know you're serious people. Action, acceleration, stuff like that. But much of it is warm, fussy talk, great networking, and then we go on and continue to screw the planet. Sorry, Dutch. <laughs> so yes, it doesn't add up yet to enough progress on the ground in terms of action. And depending on where you want to be, you either feel an enormous sense of urgency or you say, ah, oh, well, you know, we'll get there. Technology, progress. And so th this slide means absolutely nothing. It's just interesting for yourself to think, well, where in, you can put a dot and that is you. So let me talk about the state of the world. I've said already that sustainability is not new at all. Um, Joanne and the MBI and WBCSD have been going at this for 10 years. The NBI has been busy for 18 years. WBCSD exists 20 years. Rio was held for the first time in 92, also 20, 21 years now. And before that, in 1970, the Club of Rome were the first people to write a book called The Limits to Growth, which then in Stockholm, 72, uh, had a big meeting. So how are we doing? 
every six seconds a child dies from hunger. So now another one has just died. Yet another one. 18,000 children each day die from hunger. There's enough food in the world to not have to ha let that happen. We're going to grow from 7 to 10 billion people in the next decades, and we think we're going to feed them all. We can't even fill, feed a billion people today properly. So we're not making progress. The environmental damage is accelerating at the pace. It's no longer this hippie scientist community that's pushing this out. It's hard engineering people like the World Bank, like the IEA, the International Energy people are pushing this out. So, 40 years of sustainability, but every long-term trend we're looking at is going the wrong direction. And if you didn't get the urgency yet, start reading some of these books because it's going fast and wrong. The top left picture is actually a picture out of South Africa from one of the recent mining unrest, which the way I read the newspapers, I'm sure you, you know a lot more about it, is now slowly but certainly turning into a statement against capitalism and inequality. And there is many of these things. The Occupy movement has happened a year ago. They're now in the bunker cooking up a back better plan, but they'll be back soon. And the attack of the system of capitalism as we know it will come. The weather patterns are changing. This picture is, you know, of course, of Sandy. And it, the sad thing in, the, in our world is only when New York gets hit is when we start paying attention. But you don't have to go to New York to see sad things. Pakistan has been flooded three years in a row, an area as big as England, France, and Italy combined. Millions of people losing their livelihoods three years in a row. Haiti, I mean, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> um, New York is, of course, sad, and, and there a few people died, and that's always terrible. But in New York, people were suffering for a few weeks before electricity and infrastructure was restored. Haiti is pushed back three years in its recovery from the earthquake as a result of the same storm. And there's, there's zillions of incredibly sad stories. I look at South Africa as the leader of Africa. When you come f from Europe or America, you know, you often think of Africa, well, actually most people forget about Africa. It, it, it's the honesty of the world. Um, because otherwise we could not let the poverty continue in, in this beautiful continent of yours. But if you do think about it, um, and you know a bit more about it, then South Africa is the ro role model for it. And actually the thriving business community in South Africa is what should become the role model for every other African nation to develop itself. Uh, your president Zuma with his triple challenge has it completely right and it shows that the main point of sustainability in South Africa and Africa as a whole will be in the social issues. Um, we're going to have to talk a bit more serious about your coal and your CO2 and that type of stuff. We can't forget it but it's fair enough that the social issues grab the headlines here. So they came to a conclusion or to a definition of what is sustainability trying to do. And this is what we use as the sustainability or the sustainable development definition. In 2050, we will have nine plus billion people living on the planet. They must all live well. And together, we must live within the boundaries of the planet. We all know, you all know why you're here. And, and I'm, I am absolutely convinced that's not because I'm here. You're serious about sustainability. If, if we could break out into little groups and we would talk about it, we would know what it is we need to do. We, we certainly do agree, I think, when it is we need to do it, which is now, not in five or 10 years, but we need to get serious about these things now. So if the why, the what, and the when are fixed, there's only really one question left, and that is how are we going to scale up? And that's what I do for a living now. How are we going to create scale in sustainability. The first step is all of you should become a member of the UN Global Compact. Um, I, don't, I don't know, I don't think it costs much, it's more a statement of I agree these are the standards, the principles, the ethical values by which business runs. The second step is all of you will probably already today engage with the NGO community. Ten years ago, partnering between business and NGOs was scary. Today, it's the norm. 
reach out, whether it's philanthropically or from your core business, but partner with NGOs. They need your help. Together you can create solutions that alone they could never achieve. The third one is integrate sustainability in your core business, which is a bit tougher. I should be talking to the CEOs of the companies to get that done. Unilever is the best example in the world. Doubling the business in the next five years, halving the amount of resource they're going to use, you will only achieve if you actually integrate sustainability in your space. Beyond that, we're going to get, and that's happening at the moment, three years from now you will be hit, push it into the global, in the corporate governance. Here there is mandatory, mandatory reporting of non-financials. It's fabulous, but it's principle-based, not yet rule-based. We're going to go rule-based. We're going to integrate it into risk management so that not only the financial risk of business is being discussed, but also the sustainability risks. And last but not least, we're going to change the rules of the game. I'm running the World Business Council, and I am a capitalist. Do not worry. I even put on a tie for you guys. <laughs> I'm a capitalist. What is a capitalist? A capitalist is somebody who puts capital to work, and he wants something back. That's all it is. Capital to work wants something back. You know, I give you 100 whatever, and I want 12% return on it, please. Okay, Roki. But we do use natural capital, water, energy, environment, whatever it may be, ecosystems, and we do use social capital, people into our value chains. And we do not measure and manage that in the same way. We do not expect returns on it, and we should. So we should be integrating all of this, and we should move to a world of true cost and true value. In social capital, it's harder. So I'm going to work hard with Joanne and the team to see if South Africa can help us really beef up social economic impact measurement. Because the EPNL, what Puma did, was difficult but has been done. The SPNL is way more difficult and has not been done. Social issues are big here. Why don't you guys take the global lead in doing that? The accountants. The accountants will save the world. That's what this thing will do. So integrated reporting will move to an integrated risk management framework, three types of accounts to measure, manage, and optimize the returns on each capitals, and that's how we're going to define business success. Um, I've said enough lovely words about the NBI. Um, I think it's wonderful to be here today. I, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, I am committed to make the regional network for WBCSD work. Did you hear that? Work. I'm not here to give warm, fussy talks. Today I am. Well, I'm, I'm here to give talks. The warm, fussy part, you can be the judge of. But we're going to create this global action agenda, and I'm going to come back to each of the regional networks, MBI in particular, saying what of this agenda will you adopt and which together with your members and with your government and with your NGOs and with your scientists, will you implement? Because we need to get to scale. That's really all I care about. Thank you.